You are now listening to Testimonies with Terry. Hey, everybody. Um, Christian here. Uh, Terry uh, was kind enough to send me um, all of these questions and um, has just been... It has just been really sweet um, to hear from all of you uh, and to, to think that uh, my story uh, was important enough um, for some of you, wherever you happen to be or wherever you are, that that more questions um, mattered and, and that some more insight for you mattered. So I'll do my best to answer these um, well and uh, not too lengthy um and also i'll give it the caveat of uh and i'll probably say this multiple times with the with the questions as well is i am not uh uh an expert on any of the these things there's a lot of questions about um youth and the youth of today um and uh i'm not i'm not a research expert nor nor am i a psychologist um but I, I mean, I do have some opinions that I'll try to share well. Um, and then also, uh, I am not um, an expert on what, uh, you know, generational living, multi-generational living uh, looks like with uh, having my dad live with us. So, um, and I'll try to share just like our process through that. Um, but let's hit the ground uh, running with some of these questions. So the first question is, uh, what advice would you give to those who have grown up in a chaotic, abusive, neglected homes to heal from the pain of those memories? Um, man, Jesus and time is for sure uh, the best answer I have for that question. I think some, I think that some practical answers are um, counseling, um, uh, you know, somebody who's, who's removed from the situation and also has training that can help you um, process, um, really, that can, that can help you process and can help um, maybe identify some things that you can't um, identify um, in that we don't know sometimes where, where the most hurt has taken place or where we're the most wounded um, and where we need the most uh, care. So I think somebody helping you walk through that uh, is really important. I would say uh, it feels pretty impossible without a relationship with Jesus um, to heal from that pain. And uh, um, and I would also say time and maturity. Um, I'm at a better place today than I was um, 10 years ago, than I was five years ago, than I was three months ago, than I was five days ago. Um, you know, I think we sanctification gets a really bad rap um sometimes of like it hurts and it's hard and it's all these things and um all the refining and the truth is is like it's healing too like the more i become like jesus the more um the hurts and the pain and the things from from a chaotic um bringing up uh come through and uh and the more that jesus is able to to heal those things um through his process of uh, refining us and and taking care of us uh, so thank you. Um, that's a good question. Uh, next question is, with the way the world is in 2022, what is the most challenging thing about trying to speak to youth about Jesus Christ? Um, I think I'm quick to uh, to think that this is the hardest time or that, you know, with with this the current space of technology and um, connectedness and polarization um, of, of different worldviews that uh, this is the hardest time to speak and the truth is it's like um, the gospel has always had opposition no matter what your age is um, the gospel has always had opposition and uh, um, we'll continue we'll continue to and so I think the most challenging thing is just like for me to put aside those things. I think if I come in and think this is what a youth needs and this is how um, I'm going to reach them and these are the things that I need to do in order to reach them. Um, uh, and these are, you know, I need to, I need to figure out uh, how, how to, 
how to get past social media or how to get past, I think, I think some of that is really good and really strategic, but I also think like we miss it. Um, if we don't just go, you know what they need? They need to know that Jesus loves them. They need to know that he died for them. Uh, they need to know that, uh, um, that he calls them to repent and to come to him uh, and to surrender. Um, I, I don't think it's actually all that different from when, you know, in my story, when Caleb and, and other leaders and, and people that cared uh, reached out uh, to me. Um, the landscape looks very different. And yet, um, I think the most challenging thing is just removing all the noise removing all the things that the world says we can and can't touch or can and can't say or can and can't do and just and just sharing uh, the gospel um, with these students, not only with our words, but with our actions and with our lives. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the next question is, what would you say is the biggest difference between teenagers of your generation and the teenagers of this current generation as far as the struggles and the issues that they face. Um, I think I touched on it a little bit in the thing before, and I try not to get too hung up here and here, honestly. But I would say, um, I mean, technology, connectedness. Um, I, I don't, I don't actually believe that we're more polarized today than you know whether that's politically or worldview-wise than we were. Um, 10, 20, 30 years ago, the difference I think is just how connected we are, um, how everybody has a platform and every everybody's opinion is heard, um, whether or not that's good or bad um, as a thing. And so I think, um, I think a, a real struggle for teenagers is like their, the ability for them to use their voice is maybe more than ever before and the ability to actually be heard um, is I think a little bit more hindered uh, than ever before because we just assume and we think that every since everybody's got a platform, everybody's heard and everybody has a voice and and I think teenagers need to know. Um, I think people in general need to know that somebody really cares and is really listening and really leaning in. Um, and so I would say that's one of the the biggest differences is just like um, showing them what what listening and caring actually looks like uh, in today's age. Um, how do you and Sheena be intentional about having quality time together, given that you are raising two kids and have your dad living with you? Um, I think this is another good example of I, I'm not uh, an expert on generational living. Some of it um, we've just kind of attempted to figure out as we go. And also, um, we've just been uh, really, really blessed in in a couple of areas. So my dad uh, works the second shift, um, Monday through Thursday. Um, he leaves the house by about um, noon, one o'clock, and he's not home until about one o'clock in the morning uh, from, from his shift. And so um, that allows most of our days, and then as you can imagine, you you know, your sleep schedule is a little bit different. Uh, you know, you sleep later into the day uh, because of that. Um, and so my dad, uh, it almost feels like doesn't live with us Monday through Thursday. And then uh, we're all excited uh, to connect and be together um, on the weekends. And so I don't have a great example of that. I don't know that we've necessarily set up all the greatest ways of finding that time. And, uh, but I, I think Sheena and I would both say that uh, we feel well connected. And uh, I think some of that's just God's grace and mercy um, in this situation. And, and uh, there's probably some areas that if we were, if we looked with a little bit uh, finer tooth comb, we'd find like, that we need to, to grow in uh, in that area and, and do better job of being intentional with. But I guess that's the answer I have for that question. Um, what advice would you give someone whose parents uh, are moving in with them? What have been boundaries you've set with your dad uh, that you'd recommend others to set? Um, again, uh, I'm hesitant uh, to give advice uh, in this area. I feel like we've just kind of found our way through 
in the dark here a little bit, and I don't know if that's the best example of how to do that. Um, I will say um, there are pieces um, uh, just with, with, you know, with anybody like living with you where I, um, I personally uh, just struggled a little bit um, early on uh, with my dad. And I, I think just like, I think this is true of any of any situation, whether it's setting up boundaries or it's just um, realizing uh, different points of frustration or confrontation. Um, conversations. I mean, I think just sharing with my dad, like this is what bothers me and this is what's hard. And doing that before it gets too difficult or too hard to do um, and too awkward and too personal and too emotional. Um, I think conversation early and often um, is important if you're going to live with somebody um, and have them in your home, especially. And I think it's important in relationships in general, even if you don't live with that person. So, morning. morning. Hi, sorry about that. I think I also stopped the video, didn't pause the video. So, Terry, hopefully you can put these together um, or, or something. Uh, uh, I'm at my office space today and uh, somebody walked in and I just started talking to him. So, um, well, well on camera. So that was weird. Um, anyways, uh, Again, back to the question of what advice would you give someone whose parents are moving in and the boundaries. Again, I think just um, conversation early and often. And I think that's just a good, um, a good uh, way to approach relationships um, in general. Uh, and then uh, two more questions uh, that came in. Um, are you still in contact uh, with Caleb or Lisa? Um, Yes, uh, not overly, not overly close relationship. Um, to 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 be honest, Caleb lives in. Uh, um, Caleb lives in um, Boston uh, and works works and lives in Boston. Has a beautiful family there, um, and so you know we we stay connected, um, but not uh, n not overly and with some of that distance as you can imagine. But uh, um, and then and then Lisa. Uh, lives uh, about an hour away from from me, and, uh, and we we do we do connect um, a little bit, but it isn't um, over, overly uh, close. Um, uh, she she was a very important piece um, in my story, and I think sometimes when you're trying to navigate um, what relationship. Um, you know, reform relationship with, with your parents, my mom, my dad, um, with Lisa in there too. I think when you're young and you're trying to figure that out and somebody takes really good care of you and cares well for you. And then, you know, in your 19 year old brain, you just want to try to fix relationship with your mom and with your, your dad. Um, I would probably be hurtful. And so I think there was some of that, uh, from me. Uh, to Lisa as I was just trying to figure out what adulting looked like and what prepare, repairing some of these relationships look like. But uh, Lisa has been a strong, important piece um, in my story and I would not be, um, I think, where I am today um, without, without Jesus using her um, in my story. And uh, the last question is, do you have a relationship with your mom? Yes, my mom uh, lives in Florida, um, 